I've worked mostly on family-oriented animated features for years. In the feature animation space in the world of storyboarding, technical drawing isn't that much of a priority. Recently, I've moved to TV animation. More of my recent work includes adult animation. With more detailed anatomy, it's violent and it's more serious in tone. And some of these productions require me to do high action stuff since I'm currently on a superhero action show. So this involves a lot of drawing, a quick turnover, and some decent knowledge in anatomy and mechanics. Drawing the human figure fast isn't my strength, so I had to actually prepare myself. I had to teach myself how to draw these figures fast and how to have an effective shorthand for both boarding and animation. In fact, I did a lot of sketching outdoors just to figure out a system that I could use. I've even studied other action animators that I admire and how they construct their own shorthands. I'm mostly going to be talking about exercises I made for myself to be able to learn and gain the skills to keep up with a detailed action show with such a high turnover. What I'm going to be talking about isn't necessarily a drawing fundamentals talk, but more of a way of thinking. So I still encourage everyone to learn everything they can about drawing, whether it's academic drawing skills, storytelling drawing skills, gesture drawings, construction, all the basic fundamentals you can find. I've made several videos about drawing the figure for animation and how certain animators break down the figure. I talk about basic anatomy, fast gesture drawing, decisive line work. Each of those videos have dedicated goals to what I was trying to get across and that there really isn't an order in how you should watch them. So I want to treat this video the same way because it did require me to think things in a different approach and contradict some of the other videos that I've made because, again, different goals, different objectives. However, one thing that you should know that in animation, animators and story artists prioritize clarity first, mechanics next, and the technical solve drawing last. This is so that the ideas, the storytelling, and the intentions are clear before you solidify a drawing. If the idea, the storytelling, and even the mechanics don't work, and your principles suck, the solid drawings are going to suck too. Something clear and loose could be just a clear silhouette, crude expressions, exaggerated poses. When you see it, even if it's most loosest or crudest form, you get it, you get the intentions behind it, and to me that's what clarity is. Now let's move on to the drawing exercises for this video that I want to talk about. One thing I recommend is to prepare a drawing reference. You know, I basically grabbed an image of some generic sucker and used them as a model sheet a generic male figure, and I'm going to be using him as a way to talk about how animators break down model sheets and design so they can adapt to another style, its proportions, and replicate it for their animation production. Now the first exercise I want to talk about is just a single shape approach. It's where you treat the body as one entire thing. At this point, I'm not trying to define where the arms are or where the pelvis start or the legs or some of the anatomy and muscle information. It's all just one giant shape that is you know, very blobby and loose. I keep the head separate though, and I'm not going to include the neck. Now, there is absolutely nothing wrong with drawing your first pass of the figure as stickmen or gestures where you just draw the spine and just draw like egg shapes for the ribs and the pelvis and all that jazz. In fact, many animators do that and I think it's totally fine. Now, the only problem I have with it personally is that it doesn't really treat the figure as a design. Especially if the animation relies on the shapes of the character design. So for example, when I storyboard, I want the character to come in and out of the camera shot. So the character shape and design actually works with the composition of the shot. A loose, blobbly shape that kind of represents the designs, the shapes, and the proportions of the design is good enough for storyboarding your thumbnails. So when I do this practice, I'm not drawing in the gesture lines, the action lines, or defining where my contrapposto happens. I'm just trying to nail the idea by drawing the whole body as one. This is a great exercise to practice where you put your lines or to force yourself to look at negative spaces. For those who don't know what a negative space is, it's an example of seeing the shape outside of your main subject or the figure and use that as a reference to draw the shape of the figure or the silhouette. I don't spend too long on these, but I would say to not go beyond two minutes for each of these poses. I would recommend at max 90 seconds for each pose, but if you can get more confidence in going fast, go for it. I would also recommend trying to practice drawing more improvised poses without reference to see if you can draw single shaped bodies with no reference, and to see if you can make more natural looking poses or figures with just shapes by your own accord. When I animate or storyboard like a first pass, I don't worry too much about proportions since that can be fixed a bit later on during the tie down stage for example. Something like this is great when you're treating your shots as compositions and graphic design. 
you know, for animators who do action, imagine having a character come close to the screen and away, coming close to the camera, zipping all around the place. Doing a first pass like this is good for like a layout pass, a staging pass, and that the composition is already there. In terms of how I use this for storyboarding, I use this pass for my initial thumbnailing stage. Just so I can get the shot across, I can show it to my client or my directors, and that it's clear to them what they're seeing. Next, I wanna talk about the torso box using tapered limbs. This is actually my favorite approach or my go-to approach when I draw figures for animation and boarding. So I just draw my heads as an egg shape. I feel like heads are a bigger topic of its own, so I'm not really gonna talk much about heads for this one. But yeah, I just treat the torso, the pelvis as one box that can bend. Now, some people use triangles like, you know, a triangle for the rib cage, and then you invert that and then suddenly you get the pelvis. I'm just going to keep it simple. You know, for me, a box is simple enough and these simple boxes can be modified to make the waist smaller or bigger or even make the top or bottom wider. Now, I don't want you guys to see these as tips and tricks because I do think that you might want to have or think about human anatomy. Like, for example, we're thinking about the side profiles. You have to think about the orientation of the rib cage and the pelvis. When I do this approach when drawing the figure, I do have a certain order of how I start to finish. You know, in most cases, I define the torso and head first and then work my way towards down the legs because this is what grounds our figure. It, you know, allows them to stand. Then I would go back and draw the arms. When I treat the arms and legs or the limbs, I kind of treat them like cylinders that just taper. You know, tapering being it starts big and then it gradually gets smaller kind of like a human body. Sometimes I just add a ball at the end of them just to resemble hands or, or even feet. Maybe I'll give them little glove hands to make it feel a bit more specific. Like at this stage, I'm not really super concerned about making everything connect. Like sometimes the limbs will just float above or around the torso. Like I haven't really defined where the butt is and all that. I'm just strictly thinking about things in simple shapes, even if those shapes feel a bit disconnected. But as much as I hate talking about tips and tricks, I do sort of utilize them. So for example, there are ways where I can have a drawing like this make a bit more connected or finished. So I'll add a bit of things like little accents, curves, and widgets with the lines defining the shoulder or the deltoids connecting the torso to the arms. The same thing with legs. I start adding lines to define the waist and then making them connect with the torso. I'll also add lines that kind of like curve outwards to define other accents like elbows, knees, and calves, just to give it a bit of clarity closer to human anatomy. You can even play around with straights versus curves here. And when I add these little bits of accents and curves, you know, these little connective tissue and merging lines, you know, notice how the drawings start to feel closer to human anatomy. So again, study some human anatomy. When I'm storyboarding action with a lot of choreography, I usually leave my drawings like this if I'm stretched for time. It could be highly posed out, but it's clear enough to get the message across. Sometimes I use this approach for rough animation, but from my experience working with you know action shows, especially if you want to have a lot of poses for the choreography, this is good enough. Now the next and last approach I'll be talking about is much closer to how animators sort of study a model sheet and break down the figure before they have an idea of how they could start animating. If you wanna be able to draw in other styles or draw in different design sensibilities, learn how to break things down to basic shapes. Again, I'm using my generic man here, but I'm separating each crucial part like the rib cage or the pelvis as separate shapes. And I'm looking for big shapes that are important to the proportion and the design of the figure or the character that you're trying to draw. By doing this, I'm also allowing myself to find specific shapes and to define measurements. So by tracing and drawing over my reference, I know that the torso compared to the head is at a certain size and I know if I cut the lower half of the torso in half, I can use this as a reference on where the pelvis and waist are. I can define separate shapes for the upper arms, upper legs, lower arms, and lower legs, defining shapes for the hands and feet that feel closer to what they actually are like separating the palms and a big shape for where the fingers should sit. For the head, I still keep things simple, whether it's just an egg shape or maybe a more specified shape for the head, or I try to break it down even more. For example, a sphere resembling the skull, another shape defining the skull, and maybe a cylinder for the neck. I've talked about the head briefly in some other videos, but I think that maybe someday I'll talk more about drawing the head for animation. 
Now, when I use this approach for my figure drawing practices or other practical usages, I still revert back to the previous approaches, meaning I draw the overall shape, you know, treating the figure as one whole shape and then defining where the box body is and then figuring out how the arms and legs taper. Once I have the overall shape and the gesture down, then I start to define the specific shapes of the body. This is because I'm not good at drawing a clean first pass and I want to have a clear idea of how I'm laying out the pose, kind of like treating it as like a placeholder. So this is why I would still do the earlier approaches first. You know, if I were animating, I would just do the earlier approaches first and then move my way towards this building block approach. I still do things like add widgets and lines to define where the waist are, where the forearm muscles are, biceps and other things. And maybe at this stage, I'll take my time even more. Like I'll start being more careful with how I put down the lines. I don't just like sketch all over the place. I'll just, you know, make one or two lines for one part of aside and then move on to another part. I could adjust it more so it bears resemblance to a more cleaner drawing that looks more closer to the final look. But the foundation is there along with its specific shape. So when I do a cleanup pass, I know exactly what I'm drawing on top over and I know how to define those clean lines. So how would you use this approach if you were using it for practicality? And some of you guys might be asking, how is this practical for either animation or storyboarding? When I thumbnail my storyboards, I draw you know, crude single shape figures representing the human body just to make a placeholder or to define the shapes of the shots because I treat shots like an overall composition. Sometimes, you know, there'll be an over the shot shoulder. Maybe it's not even a shoulder. It's probably like a character's hand or a character's ass. But the ideas and the intentions are there. I use the overall single shape approach just to get my character placement ideas down. And then on the same drawing, I would start separating the torso and the limbs. From here, I can break it down even more if I want to. I can start defining more lines for measurements or defining where the upper arm or the lower arm cut off. Something like this is great for a rough animation pass, especially when you're dealing with full body animation and you want to stick closer to clear anatomy. And then I could do another pass on top of this drawing to do a more specific tie down stage where I start defining the actual design you know, with details here and there. Either I can do that or just move straight to clean up animation from this rough torso pass. But trying to practice this sort of approach, I learned a lot. I learned how to find ways to work smarter. I could even work a bit faster without the fear of making mistakes all the time. And most importantly, I was just trying to figure out an approach that I could talk about with clarity in hopes that people can also use the same approach if they need it. But one of the reasons why I keep trying to find different approaches or practices when it comes to drawing is really just because of the circumstances I'm in. For this case, it's drawing the human body, drawing it fast, drawing many of it, but enough where it's clear enough. But that's just the drawing aspect. I mean, the mechanics, again, are a whole different thing. And mechanics are things like how to make things naturally move. How should the hip move when they're running? And I feel like that's another discussion for another time. Anyways, that's all, bye. Interested in learning hand-drawn animation or learning how to finish an animated shot from beginning to end? Have a look at the store where you'll find the complete introduction to 2D animation video course, tutorials, and other resources. Learn classical animation approaches, drawing, lectures, techniques, and other process videos. Visit the store through the link in the description below.